Hello friends. Thank you for stopping by my channel for another encouraging interview. Today, I want to share with you a conversation I had with my good friend Joshua Sharp, a recent graduate of Truett Theological Seminary. Over this past year, I have had the privilege of getting to know Joshua as my roommate. Here, he shares what led him to ministry and to Truett and what this wonderful seminary means to him. We also offer a prayer for victims of domestic violence amidst this COVID-19 pandemic. I hope you are blessed and encouraged with Joshua's words. And so without further ado, here is our interview. All right, I am here with my good friend, Joshua Sharp, and he is here to share with us uh, his life and ministry uh, what the Lord has done in his life and how uh, he would like to encourage our viewers. So welcome, Joshua. Uh, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to the viewers so that we can get a little bit better understanding of who you are. Thank you, Joshua. It's good to be here. So my name is Joshua Sharp, and I am a freshly minted graduate of Baylor University's George W. Truett Theological Seminary. I officially graduated with my Master of Divinity on Thursday, May 14th of 2020, and I currently live in Waco, Texas. Things are a little bit up in the air about plans for the future, just because as you were aware, we're kind of in the middle of a global crisis. But I've taken the opportunity to just slow down and think and pray about what's next, and I'm trusting that God will guide me in the right direction when the time comes. So where did you go for your undergrad and what led you to pursue ministry and what led you to Truett Seminary? It's a great question. So I did my bachelor's degree at Southwest Baptist University in Bolivar, Missouri, just a little Baptist college up in central Missouri. And I did my degree with a double major in psychology and Christian studies. And what drew me to ministry and to Truett were a couple of different things. The first is that I had the privilege during most of my undergraduate career to be involved in a jail ministry at a local jail a few counties over that involved just once a week going over and preaching, leading Bible studies, meeting one-on-one -on -one with inmates and praying with them and just talking to them about Jesus and listening to them, listening to them talk about their troubles and just helping connect them with local churches if and when they got out of jail. And that was a really formative and impactful ministry experience that I had. And I realized, hey, I, I want to keep doing something like this and maybe even make a living out of it. And so that was one big factor. Another big factor that led me to ministry and to true it was the influence of my Bible and theology professors. Now, I love my psychology degree. I love my psychology professors. And I really also benefited from their mentoring but it was primarily my theology and Bible professors who pointed me towards Truett because they had friends who were on the faculty here. So for example, uh, Dr. Garland, who was the Dean of Truett Seminary for several years, uh, went to seminary and PhD studies with one of my professors from undergrad, Dr. Mike Furman. And so they're friends and have known each other for a long time. And so that, that's sort of the connection that led me to Truett. But when I was taking my Bible and theology classes, I just loved what I was learning. I just took after it like a, like a fish to water. I loved studying the Bible more in depth and more academically than I ever had before. I loved studying the history of the church and theology and all of those things. And it, it did so much to strengthen my faith, to edify me, to strengthen my walk with Jesus. And that was just, another huge factor that led me towards Truett and towards ministry. And then a third and final factor that really influenced my direction in life was my being a participant and a member at Freshwater Church in Ballarat, which was a, a church that had been a church plant for a little while. And I went there my last two years of undergrad, became a member, and just got super plugged in, and I loved it. I loved the church. I loved the pastors. I loved the people there, and for a while earlier in undergrad, I'd kind of been a little disillusioned with the local church and with the church as an institution, but getting involved at Freshwater and being mentored by my pastor, Dave, and just 
plugging myself into the life and ministry of that church really revitalized my love for the local church and my belief that God is at work among his people using the church. And I just think that that has been a huge influence on my life. And even though I was only at Freshwater Church for a couple of years, it left an indelible mark on my own life and formation. That, that sounds uh, absolutely amazing. And I am thankful that all of those stepping stones eventually led you to Truett, led you to a place where we were able to meet. And I have certainly been blessed by getting to meet you and your encouragement, especially in my own first year of seminary. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm glad that we crossed paths. And it is amazing getting to hear your testimony, getting to hear how God has worked through you and led you to this point. Um, so if I could ask, what uh, during your time at Truett Seminary, what has been uh, your favorite memory? What has been the most impactful memory for you during your time in seminary? Mm -hmm. So that is a really excellent question. I don't know if I can reduce it down to a particular point in time or a particular class or specific experience, but I think what I love most about Truett and what has been so wonderful about my time here is the community, not just between the students, but between students and faculty. I really think that Truett ha does an excellent job of cultivating community and so your professors are not just your teachers, they're also your mentors or your friends. And the fact that Truett itself is like the architecture of Truett, the building is designed to foster that kind of thing where on the second floor, you've got classrooms on one side of the hallway and faculty offices on the other. And so the idea behind that is they wanted students to be interacting with professors before, during and after class. And I think that's just been incredibly successful. There are so many professors at Truett, including some that I actually never had a class with that I consider friends and mentors. And that has been such an enormous blessing. I think the people are what really make Truett special. I mean, granted, the classes and the curriculum are great, and I'm not complaining about the generous financial aid either, but I really do think that Truett is the people in the there. So now that you have achieved your Master of Divinity at Truett, um, after having uh, such a wonderful experience in seminary, getting to learn from so many amazing professors that I am now um, getting to know myself, what are your plans uh, after seminary? What do you plan, how do you plan to use your degree in ministry? Hmm. Well, you know, there's that old saying, all the best plans of mice and men often go astray or something like that. I don't know if that's an exact quote, but I'll be honest, things are up in the era. And I think that's largely a product of what's happening in the world at this moment. The coronavirus pandemic has really thrown us all for a loop and there's a bunch of uncertainty in the air. And so I'll be honest, I don't know quite for sure what is the long-term future for me. I know that for a long time, I considered pastoral ministry as the avenue I wanted to follow for my, for my own ministry. And that's still on the table. But I've also realized that I love academics. I love studying. And even though I was really tired and worn out in the last weeks of the semester, less than a week after finishing my coursework before I'd even finished before I'd even officially graduated from Truett I found myself thinking I think that I can earn my PhD in something at some point and do that sooner rather than later and so I am currently in a place where I am able to sort of wait for a little while tap the brakes just a little bit and think and pray about what's next because again I don't have any full-time ministry positions lined up. I don't have any huge commitments that I'm tied to by the end of the summer. So my hope and goal for at least the next few months, if not the next year or so, is just to think and pray and consult mentors and friends and decide what's next. And hopefully a lot of the dust surrounding this pandemic will start to settle and maybe help bring some clarity. 
Harriet, uh, thank you for sharing your insights of what your next plans are. Um, and as you think of what your next plans are, I know that it, it's probably been kind of disappointing to um, reach the point where you're about to graduate and then all of a sudden a pandemic hits and it certainly changes how one graduates. I know a lot of people are struggling with that, um, whether they be high school students, undergrad students, or graduate students like us who um, have been excited about getting to graduate in now so many aren't able to do that in person with their families watching them, cheering them on and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So what encouragement would you provide to uh, graduates, whether they be at the high school level or the graduate level, uh, mm -hmm. what would your encouragement be to them as they try and figure out what their next phase in life is without being able to celebrate their current accomplishments? Yeah. No, that's a really, yeah, it's a really difficult issue. And I'll be honest, you know, everybody's experiences are different. And so I'm speaking only out of my own experience. And so my words may or may not be helpful to a number of people. One thing that has been helpful for me has been the fact that I've already grad before even before coming to Truett, I'd already graduated twice. I graduated from high school and then I graduated from college. And in both cases, I got the ceremony, I got the family and friends who were there, I got the celebration. And so missing out on my seminary graduation, or at least on the traditional May ceremony for graduation, it was disappointing, but I don't think it was as disappointing for me as it would be for someone who, say, is the first person in their family to graduate from college, or for a person who is graduating from high school, and so this is their first real graduation, and they're transitioning into adulthood, or for someone who's just completed their doctorate and has had the opportunity to celebrate the pinnacle of their academic achievement, but they don't have the opportunity to celebrate that in the traditional way. And I also think, especially because I'm seriously considering further doctoral studies, it's not as though my MDiv was the end of my academic career and that ceremony got cut short. So just that has been helpful for me, recognizing in my own personal experience that this is just one graduation of many. And I've had the privilege and joy of being through graduations before. And so it didn't hit as hard as I'm sure it does for some people. But I think something that has been really meaningful about this whole experience with Truett specifically is the way that Baylor and Truett has reached out and bent over backwards to try to do what they can in the midst of everything that's happened. Because, you know, they recognize that this is a huge milestone achievement in people's lives to graduate, whether with your bachelor's, master's, or doctorate from Baylor University. And they have done an incredible job doing everything they can to make graduation special, even though we can't physically gather for a ceremony. And it's been so encouraging because, I mean, for one thing, I got my, my name put up on the electronic billboard at a McLean Stadium as part of that program they did just today. And so, I mean, that probably wouldn't have happened during regular graduation. But uh, yeah, I think the, the unconventional and non-traditional things, the really, the ingenuity and the creativity that Baylor has put forward has been really fun to see. And it's also just very affirming because I think more than in times past, Baylor and Truett have made it really, really clear that they care about us, that they're proud of us for graduating, that this is a huge accomplishment. And so even though we don't get the traditional ceremony, I've been touched by the extent to which Baylor and Truett is trying to still give us something of an experience. They didn't just say, sorry, we're postponing or canceling graduation ceremonies and you just have to deal with it. And we're sorry, that stinks. Too bad, so sad, hope it doesn't happen again. But rather they've tried to roll with the punches and do what they can. And I think that 
that has made this whole experience more emotionally resonant than I think a regular graduation may have been. It's come at a cost, of course, but I do think that in some ways it, it's made this graduation cycle more poignant and more meaningful. Yeah, so um, thank you for sharing that. Um, obviously, I, as, as someone who became your friend this past year, I wanted to be able to cheer you on at graduation, but I am thankful that we get to go to a school that values our accomplishments and is trying to find some way to uh, make up for all of the um, kind of unforeseen things. We obviously didn't see it at the beginning of the year, but all the stuff that's been going on, they try to make it work to, so that we could still be encouraged. And so I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for getting to know you. I am thankful uh, for all of your accomplishments. And I so look forward to seeing everything that you do with your degree, with uh, your seminary education and whatnot. And so it has been, you have been certainly encouraging to me in all of this. Um, and my final question for you during this interview is what would you like viewers to be in prayer for in mm -hmm. all of this? So there are two things I'd like to say. The first is when praying, it can be really, really difficult because there's so much that needs prayer. And you, I don't know how other people are, but me, when I go down to pray, I bow my head and I close my eyes and I just think to myself, there's so much, like, how do I cover it all? What do I say? What do I pray about? What if I forget something? And so I've really been leaning into the Lord's prayer because in so many ways that just covers so much of how we as Christians are supposed to pray. It's how Jesus taught us to pray. And it's, you know, the most time tested and widely accepted prayer in the history of the church. And so I think praying the Lord's Prayer, you can never go wrong. If you're completely at a loss and have no idea what to ask for, or what to say, or what to cover, then the Lord's Prayer is really just a rock in, a, in, a, in choppy and difficult seas. The Lord's Prayer provides a shelter and a sturdy foundation. But to get more specific, I do think something that has not received as much attention in the wake of everything that's happened that needs attention is actually the rates of domestic abuse. Because of the shutdowns and everything that's happened as a result of the pandemic, we've seen both the frequency and severity of domestic abuse rise significantly, both because people are trapped at home with their abusers and because those abusers are themselves very much extra angry, extra anxious, and extra upset because of everything that's going on. And so I think if we could, I would like, you know, listeners and watchers to be praying for victims of abuse, that they would find relief, that they would find safety, and that God would protect them and take them to a better environment. And I would pray that abusers are brought to repentance and are able to change their ways and break free from the cycle of sin that leads them to harm other people. And so would you like to close us out by praying for those things? Absolutely. Dear Lord, we are so grateful to you for your kindness and your love and the salvation that you offer us through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we know we live in a broken and sinful world. And just one form of that brokenness and sinfulness are the patterns of abuse that so plague so many families and so many households and so many people in this world and in this country. And Lord, we pray that you would intervene and that you would use us, your people, for transformative and redemptive work in this world that through us you would bring deliverance and safety and healing to victims of abuse. And Lord, I pray that you would bring abusers to repentance, that they would be transformed from the inside out, that they would abandon these sinful and destructive habits, and instead, Lord, be transformed into the image of your Son, and that they would stop harming other people. And Lord, as we just pray together, we pray the way your Son taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks for that, Josh. And You're welcome. thank you for uh, sharing your story. Thank you for sharing uh, a little bit of your life with everyone today. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. Um, and it has been an absolute pleasure getting to talk with you today. Uh, I hope that it encourages viewers, uh, that it reminds them uh, that God works in all of our situations. And so yeah. thank you for that. Uh, blessings upon you. Have a wonderful day and stay awesome. Thank you. You do the same, Josh. Thank you, Joshua, for taking the time to join me for this interview. I have been blessed getting to know you, and I wish you all the best in all of your future endeavors. To my viewers, be encouraged. In the midst of everything around us, God is with us. So now, may the peace of Christ be with you. May you have a wonderful day, and stay awesome. You're muted, Josh. Yes, I forgot that I muted myself. So <laughs> I'll have to edit that too.